What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ and focusing on the fuck fest that is the Matthew Shane situation in Colorado. As I stutter coming out of the gate, real good luck, CJ. Uh, by the way, I just want to give a, give you guys a quick update. It's when you know you're rusty. Preseason for all of us. Uh, slowing it down this year. You guys know the big deal. I'm, I wrote a book promoting that. I'm writing a few more books. Um, Amazon.com, The Whaler. Look it up. Buy it. Give me your money. Uh, so this season's going to be uh, not as the updates won't be as frequent, but you know you got to pay the bills somehow. And uh, I found out through the opinions of other people that I'm actually not a bad book writer. Humble brag. So check that out. That's why the updates are going to be you know not as frequent. I'm not doing six and seven pieces a day anymore. Only so many hours in a week, and I got to write, work full time, and still have time to keep my sanity via drinking a lot of alcohol. So that's that. Let's go back to the Matthew Shane situation for a second. For my NBA fans at home, this is a Carmelo situation in New York manifesting itself in Colorado on ice. What do I mean by that? Actually, Carmelo, former Denver Nugget, people forget that. He played seven fucking years for the Nuggets. Um, long story short, I think that I think they told Duchesne, we're gonna trade you this summer. Don't you know you're gonna be out of this fuck fest. And you know, don't worry about it. You know, you'll be playing in Ottawa or Nashville or you know, Boston, wherever. And that hasn't happened. So, you know, I know there's guaranteed contracts, he's getting paid, all that shit. But, like, at the same time, the peace of mind of, like, oh, I've got to go back to this place where they told me they, they don't want me anymore. And the rumors have been out there for almost I had two years since the Ryan O'Reilly trade. When Colorado decided that they wanted to really suck. Go from kind of sucking to really being awful. By the way, to get hosed in that deal, Joe Sackett. Comfer and Zadorov for fucking Ryan O'Reilly. Good move, Joe. But, and the same thing with Carmelo in New York, too. That go on the NBA thing. I mean, they had, you know, supposedly a deal done with Cleveland. That didn't happen. Then Houston was on the one-yard line, and then they must have had P. Carroll making the calls because it got intercepted. Um, had to make that joke. Uh, but, again, it, it, and you, you don't want to feel too bad for these guys because they're making a shitload of money. But, again... If you're told in good faith, like, we know we're a fucked up organization, we're going to trade you, and then training camp comes around and you're, lo and behold, you're back, um, not the best look for anyone. And supposedly, there's a deal on the table, Cody CC for um, Duchesne. I'm sure if Ottawa sweetens the deal with a pick or, you know, I'm sure a pick of a B-list prospect, I mean, um, probably not Bowers, but... You know, he, he you pick up one down here. Um, then maybe that's that gets a job done. You know, Ottawa's in the mix for him. I don't think Nashville, if I'm if I was Dave Foyle and I was Nashville, I would not do that Matthias Ekholm for Duchenne trade that I've been advocating for all summer. Um, mostly because, no disrespect to Duchenne, right now he's a depre depreciating asset. Try to buy a little lower on him. And the other thing is with Nashville, not for nothing. If they were healthy in that Stanley Cup final and Johansson was at 100%, they would have beaten Pittsburgh. So you, you assume that you're not going to be that unhealthy going into the playoffs this year. You add Nick Benino. Now, obviously, Duchesne's better than Nick Benino. Big BU fan there, but not going to advocate that um, Benino's a better player than Matt Duchesne in any way, shape, or form. So you had a really good forward group, and the bread and butter of your organization since the the league has been its defense. And I know on a blue line that has... You know, P.K. Subban, it has, you know, new captain, Roman Yossi. I know Ryan Ellis is out for an extended period of time. But, you know, he'll be back by, you know, New Year's. Uh, no outdoor game at, at, at the Titans Stadium this year. Too bad for Nashville. So, might as well use that to your advantage in Western Conference where having good defensemen is kind of sort of important. You know, I'm not knocking Duchesne, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think that fit with him in the Music City is what it was a few months ago. So, we'll see what happens. Again, I, I, Ottawa makes a lot of sense, especially if they can do CC in a, you know, whatever. Um, you know, and then the, other, the other sleeper team to keep an eye on is Pittsburgh because, you know, they're always sneaky in moments like this, like the Kessel trade. And I know, you know, they don't have any gap space, but Jimmy Rutherford finds a way to make it happen. So, I, I, I'm just kind of low-key keeping an eye on the, on the Penguins in the situation. I mean, I don't think they're going to make a deal for them, but, you know, stranger things have happened. And I, I didn't think they had the assets to make a Kessel trade. Although, you also make the argument, 
Castle was kind of a you know depreciating asset at the time that had his name swirled around trade rumors and kind of worked out for him when he got out of Pittsburgh. So hopefully for Duchesne's sake, or when he got out of Toronto, excuse me, preseason, still rusty. Um, hopefully for Duchesne's sake, it, uh, it all works out for him. You know, good guy, good player, shit organization that is the Colorado Avalanche, and uh, it's an all-around bad situation. So anyway, that's all I can episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes throughout the preseason and beyond. Later, guys.